Ah, the Legion, and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi, and today we're gonna do our top 10 best mods in E4 1.30. We will be taking into account both graphical as well as complete overhaul mods and other various mods for this top 10. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, then consider subscribing. It would really help me out so much. The month of January has not been the best for me when it came to subscribers. If you do subscribe, I promise I will only deliver quality content with each passing video, and if we reach a 1500 likes on this video i'm gonna do a top 10 nations you didn't even know exist in 1.30 we're gonna kick off this list with the graphical improvement mod the graphical improvement mod basically changes the way that you see the game it is not an overhaul mod but it is a mod that definitely will help out a lot of people the best part about this mod is that it is actually iron man compatible so that means if you go ahead and want to play an iron man mode game you definitely can do it with this mod what it does change change is it changes the borders between the various nations as well as the borders between the various states and the provinces themselves also. It also improves the other map modes including the terrain map mode not just the political map mode giving a better contour of the map which is also illustrated within the political map mode. If you have not yet tried out the graphical improvement mod then you can check it in the description below. I've linked all of the mods in the description and you guys definitely should try this one out as it is going to improve your game considerably and if you have not tried any graphical mod until now start by using this one as it is a popular option for a very good reason. A true masterpiece when it comes to overhauls is the Elder Scrolls overhaul for U4. It starts off in the 57 Dawn of the First Era and features a variety of different times within the Elder Scrolls universe, all of which have been fully scripted with their own unique and particular situations. Not to mention aside from the mainland of Cyrodiil and the Elysian Islands here with the High Elves, you also have a few few other additions. If you are familiar with the Elder Scrolls universe, you'll basically see the Tribunal Islands and a few other ones from the lores which we don't actually see within the Elder Scroll games, but we do see in this amazing mod. Once you start up the game, you're gonna get greeted with an information notice where you're gonna be asked whether you wanna get news about the other countries or not. It is your choice. I would suggest going for that as it is quite an interesting and lore-friendly idea. As you can see, if you start off as the Elysian Order, you have knowledge of a few other places around the world, but not of all the places an entire continent is missing here, quite equivalent to the New World in the base U4 game. There's tons of new cultures all around, and these cultures definitely change drastically from age to age, depending on when you decided to start the, your game in, as well as tons of different religions everywhere with their own unique modifiers and flavor. Some of of which have been inspired from the base game such as Marukism is basically reformed with different bonuses. A huge amount of unique decisions also that you can enact and formable nations that you can reform yourself into. A huge amount of extra policies that you can enact at the same time and a lot more idea groups. You have the basic ones that the game starts off with and if you scroll down you see a lot of new ones. Of course there's a huge amount of new government reforms too and plenty Plenty full of flavor. This mod, in my opinion, has really outdone itself with the amount of flavor that it adds to the game. If you're having trouble running U4, you should try Fast Universalis. Fast Universalis is actually a graphical mod that significantly improves the way that you can play the game, and it's also Iron Man compatible. What the mod actually does is it dulls down the oceans as well as the actual provinces of the game, thus considerably decreasing the amount of processing power that the game requires for you to use it. This mod especially shines in the mid to late game when the game gets extremely clunky. It lowers that by up to 50% performance wise. So if you have a not so great computer or laptop or whatever, definitely give this mod a try. You will not regret it. Do take note however that the sprites will disappear and you will have to turn off the unit packs in order to make this mod actually work and that your capital cities will be highlighted by the star on the map 
top. So you will be sacrificing a lot of that juicy graphics if you do decide to try out Fast Universalis. If you're tired of losing against the Turk says Byzantium, you should try the Overpowered Byzantium mod. So what this mod does is basically a sort of a meme in my opinion. You start off with a completely different idea set. You have the same ideas but they've been buffed by a thousand fold. You get all power cost minus 10%, admin efficiency plus 35, dev cost minus 20 and so on. Eventually you can even get discipline plus 10%. Also from the missions you get until the end of the game another plus 10% discipline, siege ability plus 70% and so on. I'm not even going to go on with this. Literally all of these are ridiculous. One more thing that you get is free units basically. If you go to your macro builder you can build the Pronoyern's infantry and cavalry as well as the Akritoi infantry which basically costs the same like your regular infantry but they don't take as much manpower. In fact they don't take any of your manpower and they're basically aliens who somehow regenerate from the vacuum of space. I have no idea how it works. They also get discipline bonus of 0.50 and you can basically kick ass with these units from the start of the game. Gotta wait for a few months for them to just replenish their numbers first off. But even with your starting units you can defeat the Ottomans and establish the Byzantine Empire. So why is this mod on the list? It actually has a lot of cool features and events that I've noticed and it is a great way for newer players to enjoy a good old fashioned Turkish kickoff as the Byzantines. Next up is my very own mod Ludi's Balance Mod. Ludi's Balance Mod is basically a multiplayer focus mod that tries to balance out the way that the game works and how well balanced the nations are. Now despite me saying the word balanced a hundred times there actually is a lot of great features in this mod that you should try out in your multiplayer games or even in your single player games for that matter. Starting off from Africa as you can see most of the colonizable provinces in Africa have already been giving out and assigned to various nations meaning that the Europeans are not going to be able to colonize too much of Africa. They have a few provinces they can take over in the central part as well as the south part of Africa but the rest are going to be off limits for them unless they directly go to war with the African nations. The nation of Butoa which is a super strong nation within Africa because of their great ideas starts off as an independent nation as well as it starts off with a significantly higher amount of provinces than it does have in the base game giving Butoa an actual chance to stand up against the Europeans whenever they arrive or to make a name for itself by conquering Africa and going into the north afterwards. The Ottomans have been nerfed a little bit with the Byzantines getting some buffs to hold them off for a bit longer than in the vanilla base game. The Karamanids and the Kandari have also been buffed a little bit to put up a bit of more of a fight against the Ottomans. The development map mode has been redrawn so that you have different development in various parts of the world boosting up certain nations that deserve to be boosted. We also have a new power in the Middle East, Rasids actually being a viable start because of their great ideas and position and to balance out that region. The Timurids have been split between the various vassals and Ming has also been fragmented from the very beginning for whoever would like to start playing off in the Ming area. We also have the tag of Kiev from the beginning which means that you can form Ruthenia as Kiev if you'd like to and Transylvania starts off as an independent nation also. The idea groups have been redone also. They give different bonuses now so you should check that out and a lot of the national ideas have been improved or changed such as the Austrians getting five discipline rather than three discipline as well as the units have been changed. Now you are going to get basically one unit every few levels with different pips so you're not going to get three different units for one level meaning that you always want to stay ahead of military tech as there's always going to be a better unit coming up right after the one that you have. It is still a work in progress and I will be updating it more as I go along but if you guys want to check it out you can find it in the link in the description. Yet another graphical improvement mod is the Tatrum Orbis Terrarum. This mod basically completely changes the way that you see the game overall. As you can tell it gives a different feel, a more medieval mapish sort of feel. If you are into medieval looking maps and awesome artwork then you're definitely gonna love this map mode. It even changes the pause button and it even changes the aspect of the flag that you have on the map giving it a more cartoonish feel and overall a more interesting look compared to the vanilla game. It is also an Iron Man compatible graphical mod so you can enjoy this and get your achievements whilst having a completely different E4 experience. The borders as you can see will show off the color of your nation and the color of the other nation while 
plus the main provinces will not be as well contrasted as they are in the vanilla game but if you want there are additions to this mod to make it more or less contrasted so you can see your country better defined out within the borders in fact this mod has about six other additions for a variety of other graphical improvements that you can also find out on their main workshop page so depending on how you like your game to look like check out this mod and find the best option for yourself add it to your features and enjoy a brand new game all together. If you're a fan of the Game of Thrones universe, you should check out the A Song of Ice and Fire mod, which basically takes place within the books. So you have the option of starting in the 100 AD start date, which is the earliest start date, where you basically can decide to play as various OPMs around the Seven Kingdoms here, or you can play as various OPMs around the other parts, because at this start date, very few nations actually have more than one province. That being said, you can also fast forward to a lot of the known dates that you probably are aware of from either the books or from the series. For example, going over to Robert's Rebellion, we have the North as a unified nation. We also have the other kingdoms of the Vale, Riverlands, Crownlands, Westernlands, and so on. If you want to take charge of Robert's Rebellion, you get set with 19,000 and 17,000 troops on your first and second army. The game offers a special way of getting your advisor and it's actually quite well developed. You have a completely new set of military, diplomatic and admin ideas. You actually have a huge amount of them and they're all extremely different. So take a good look at them before you choose your national ideas as the policies that come along with them are also insanely different and quite plentiful for that matter. The Iron Throne is basically represented by the Celestial Empire that we have in the base game and they have their own interactions once you get a hold of the Iron Throne. There are several different culture groups. Starting off, you have the cultures of the Seven Kingdoms. You have a ton of different Dothraki clans and tribes that you can unify. As well, into the south, we have the Dornish, which are related to the other desert people in the other continent. If you ever felt like you want to be a part of the Game of Thrones universe and you want to take charge of Winterfell or whichever other faction, then give this mod a try. You will not regret it. One of my personal favorite mods, the Voltaire nightmare mod. This mod basically completely revamps everything starting off with the map itself. As you can see you don't have the whole of the planet. You only have Europe, North Africa and parts of the Middle East and the uh, Russian steppes. This is also because of a recent update before you only had Europe itself. That being said however there's insanely high amounts of new provinces added to the game. You can start off from 1054 during the great schism between Catholicism and Orthodoxy when the church became two separate entities and all the way up to the French Revolution as it is in the standard E4 vanilla game. That being said, there's a ton of new amazing and well scripted dates such as the 1309 Babylonian captivity which revolves around the Ilkhanats and the stories around that area. It's actually super well done and they've definitely done their historical research for the most part with very few historical inaccuracies. If you go to the cultural map mode you can definitely definitely see a ton of new cultures and a lot of more historically accurate and well-placed cultures with one interesting addition being the Albanians being their own culture group and the Romansh culture which is not even shown in the base game as it is a very small percentage and would not be viable to show it but because in the Voltaire's Nightmare mod the European continent has a ton more provinces it is easier to show this off. Most importantly Voltaire's Nightmare revolves around the Holy Roman Empire. The biggest monstrosity that has ever been set on Europe. As you can see there's a lot more historical accuracy to this mod than there is to vanilla. You have a huge amount of new provinces in the Holy Roman Empire and countries are definitely divided a lot more as well as you have a ton of new countries within this Holy Roman Empire. There's 354 princes, 63 free cities and the good old seven starting electors of course. If you're playing within the Germanic lands you also have 
a brand new estate, namely the Teutons, which have their own interesting privileges that you can give out. And one of my personal favorite things, a completely redone trade map mode. There's insanely high amounts of brand new trade goods such as beer, silver, which replaces gold whilst gold giving only garrison growth. Silver actually is the new gold of the game, which is actually a little bit more historically accurate. Cheese also makes its appearance within the European continent. There's also a ton of new building options with the government starting off from the Watchman Tower, going into the courthouse and the town hall. We also have the Artisan, which is the prerequisite to getting the workshop and the monument before the church, as well as we get a trade value modifier from building a road network. You can upgrade this into a guild armory. There's even medical buildings that increase the supply limit and lower devastation. All that being said, you definitely should try Voltaire's Nightmare as it is a great mod with a lot of people that have put a lot of work into this for a very long time as it has been in development for quite a while and is up to date with the latest 1.30.4 version of the game. A true overhaul is the Antebellum mod. Antebellum starts off in the 1444 start date but it is quite a different start date than what you're used to. Something definitely happened in the timeline, fractured it somehow and we have a ton of new nations here and a lot of a revamp both cultural map mode and the religious map mode as you can see we have the tangri religion in the center of europe as well as the hungarian and zekali being their own unique culture separate from anything else outside of this area with the romanians being their own culture as well and the celtic culture having the bretonians added to it as are the albanians apparently part of greek culture the holy roman empire has a brand new emperor francia and a different set of electors as Brandenburg actually does not really exist instead we have the old Slavic religion and Slavic people here even Romuva and Somensko being available as is Norse in actually Denmark and Norway the Muslims still have a hold on the Iberian Peninsula so fighting against them is gonna be Asturias's main goal here with perhaps a little bit help from Francia the Byzantines have not yet completely fallen and there is is still a chance for them to fight back the Turkish tribes as well as the Bulgarians to the north. There are a few new idea sets such as professionalism idea and state governance ideas which will help you out in the game and give a little bit extra flavor. You also have new mission trees for the majority of the nations here and definitely have a smoother game as well as a lot more opportunities and equal chances whenever you start as a medium sized nation within Europe. If you have not yet tried anti give this mod a try as it's gonna be a ton of fun no matter where you decide to start your new campaign in. A mod that has been stirring up the news is Anbinar. Anbinar is basically a Dungeons and Dragons sort of a representation of EU4 where you have a mix of every single different imaginable race including the orcs and the great orcish lands. You also have the humans of course, the elves, the dwarves, the gnomes and so on. Plentiful of different races ideologically which you can see from the different cultures on the map with the green and gray orcs on the eastern sides and then we have the various humans soon to be replaced by elvish races in the center of the continent but that is not all as the continent is massive and you can definitely explore and go on an adventure in the other parts of the world for the time being we will just focus on the main part here we have a sort of an imperial structure that replaces the HRE from the base game where the nation of Vex is the new emperor. We also have a brand new religion, the Regent Court, which is not so much of a religion as it is a sort of a cult type of institution. Once you start your adventure in Anbinar, you quickly notice a ton of flavor that comes with this overhaul. You have the ability to study magic and wield it, using it to your advantage. The only new building added in Anbinar is the Mage Tower, which is unique to it and gives you local development development cost minus 10% and attrition for enemies plus one as well as give you the mages estate more magic power. You obviously are going to have the magisters and adventurers as the brand new estates to which you can give special privileges. Idea group wise they are the same as vanilla not much of a change in that perspective similar to not much of a change in the building perspective. The empire of Anbinner has an identical system to that of the HRE in the base game so if you're familiar with that you're basically going to know what's happening within Anbinar. Anbinar has been getting quite a bit 
of traction in the recent months with a lot of popular content creators playing it and showing it off on stream. So if you like to watch more Ambinar videos or watch me even stream this, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know your opinion on it. I also recommend that you try out Ambinar for yourself, especially if you like Dungeons and Dragons and all of the lore that comes alongside with it. There's a lot of flavor in this mod that will make you really enjoy it so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as well as leave the bell button on. You'd really be doing me a favor if you did subscribe as it would encourage me to make more videos like these in the future. If we get this video to 1,500 likes, I'm gonna do a top 10 nations you didn't even know about in EU4 1.30. Also wanna give a very big thank you to all my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much guys for all the support you've been offering me. If anybody else wants to become a patron or a channel member, you can check the links in the description. So until the next one, have a great day everybody. Thank you.